Hello, my name is Dwayne Blab, and welcome to the NSDA. Here's a quick fix on forward skating. Forward skating is probably the biggest part of the game, right? Players are always moving up ice, whether it's the defenseman skating up or forward back checking or forward checking. And everybody skates a little bit differently. So there's no perfect way to skate because everyone's gonna have their own way and their own technique on how to skate. There are many inefficiencies that players do, especially at young ages, that if we can make them a little bit more efficient, it's gonna help them in the long run throughout their whole hockey career. So if we look at our body from head to toe, number one is keeping our head square. You oftentimes see, especially young kids, their heads are going side to side or shaking back and forth. You wanna keep that head square, right? Our shoulders are in a good spot and our elbows are gonna be going back and forth. So a lot of times you see players pumping their arms in front of them, especially as, even as young, young kids or two hands on their stick like this. Now we definitely do want two hands on our stick, but only when we're around the puck or we're in a scoring area, or we're coming in to get a pass or we're, going into battle for a puck, maybe we need two hands on our stick. Otherwise, if we're skating hard, forward checking or back checking, then we're gonna be a lot quicker with one hand on our stick. And since we're not sprinting, our arms don't need to be going perfectly back and forth. They can go on an angle. So if I'm pushing my skate out at a 45, my, my arm can come out at a 45. I just don't want it to come all the way across my body like this. All right, so keeping those elbows going back and forth. Now, if you look at our hips, we want our hips to stay square. And a lot of times you see players that open up their hips. So as they're skating like this, you can see my hips are kind of opening, 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 which causes me to not get as much power on my stride. I think it's gonna slow me down quite a bit. So I wanna keep those hips square. So even with young, young players, we're gonna teach them that good hockey player position. So again, shoulders over knees, knees over toes, and keeping those hips square when they push. All right, the other big inefficiency as we get down our body is not skating in straight lines. So when players are skating, you watch my toes, my toes are going out to the side, to the side, to the side. So as I'm coming towards you here, you can see I'm gonna be going side to side here. So kind of pushing, pushing, pushing. And that causes me to create lines going down the ice side to side. Ideally, we want players to drive those knees forward. So instead of going side to side, every time they stride out, they're gonna load that front leg nice and straight coming out and then they're gonna switch, switch, switch. So if I'm coming towards you, one of the cues for coaches is drive that knee forward. Keep that foot straight under your body. Don't bounce up and down, stay low and just push, 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 push. And try to travel in straight lines. So looking at it from behind, same thing. I'm gonna track straight, 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 straight as I come down. And that straight line skating, even at young, even with young players, and we've got videos on this as well, but just having them push with one leg. And you can have them look down at their feet and just push with that one leg. So as they're pushing out here, looking down, and just pushing, pushing. And with young kids, that push is not gonna look beautiful, but it's gonna be more like just a push, push, push. But getting them to understand pushing with one leg, pushing with their other leg. Pushing with one leg, pushing with the other leg. And again, they're always gonna have one side that's stronger than the other. So you may see a good strong push off the right leg, and maybe a weaker push off their left leg, which is fine, but the more they do it independently, the better that weaker leg is gonna become. Another big inefficiency is heel kicks. And this is something that, if we went out, I always joke, if we went out and watched public skating, a bunch of players that just start out, we always tell them to snap their toe. So at the end of a stride, we wanna snap their toe. But if we went out and watched this, a lot of players would be just kicking their toes up like this, right? Snap their toe and kick their heel up. But even as young kids, we want them to snap that toe and then control that heel. So with their muscles in their body, control that heel so that heel stays low, so they're not kicking up like this when they finish their strides coming out here. Right? Ideally, you want them pushing and then bringing it right back in. So just hovering that ice. And again, straight lines we talked about. So we push out and then straight line back in. Push out, straight line back in. Push out, straight line back in. If we look at forward skating, from our head all the way down to our toes, some of the main inefficiencies that we see is head moving too much. So going side to side as the player's skating, right? Elbows, so arms coming in front of our body rather than coming back and forth. And going on a 45 is fine, right? But pumping those arms back and forth and not coming across our midline. So if we had a line drawn right here, right? Right down the middle of our body here, not coming across it, trying to come out in front of it. If we look at our waist and our hips, not rotating our hips, so not swinging our hips back and forth, but keeping our hips locked in and then good pushes. And then if we talk lower body, going in straight lines. So every time I push, making sure that my glide leg's getting loaded, it's nice and straight, and then I'm gonna switch and push, switch and push, switch and push. And then last part would be our lower body. So every time you take a stride, we wanna snap our toe. Whether we're crossing over or skating forward, 
In this instance, we're skating forward, so now I'm pushing, I'm snapping my toe. So I'm finishing that stride with my toe, big push, and then I bring it right back in. I'm not pushing here and then heel kicking. And heel kicking is really common. You see a lot of young players, especially, that are pushing and then kicking that heel up and bringing it back in together. And one other thing that a lot of coaches need to take a look at is when a player's recovering. So if I take my stride here, I snap my toe, I bring my foot back, a lot of players end up snapping their toe and then winding their foot back across the midline and then back in front. So you'll see kind of like this. Again, being inefficient and that there's no need for that skate to go from here all the way across my body and back under. Ideally, I want to stay in track. So if I had two tracks drawn, one here and one here all the way up the ice, I would stay in those tracks as I'm skating and push, 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 push. One other very, very common inefficiency are players skating too wide. And there's a little bit of controversy with this about a wide tracking player and a tighter base player, right? The way I look at it is I want players to have their feet in a comfortable spot, just about shoulder distance apart. If a player's too wide, then that's gonna shorten that stride. That stride's gonna get it a lot shorter. If a player can tighten it up a little bit, that's gonna give them more length on their stride, which is gonna provide more speed. Right? I don't want players sticking tight like this, but if a player skates shoulders apart, and every time they push out, they can get back underneath their body, so that knee under their hip, then that's gonna allow them to generate a lot of power coming out that side as they're pushing through. The wider they get, the more that body rocks a little bit, especially at the young ages, and again, that's gonna cause them going side to side rather than forward and back. And the last thing we see a lot of is up and down movement. Players skate and they're popping up and down like this. And again, that's gonna reduce the amount that a player can hit that maximum speed. It's gonna slow them down a little bit as they're popping up and down, instead of staying low and trying to be as efficient as possible when they're skating.